and then we'll take off to town here. All right, so uh, the last uh, section of our chapter is um, symbolic arguments. And that puts everything that we have together into uh, one kind of, uh, puts all those things that we learn into something useful called finding out whether an argument is valid or not. Because a valid argument is very important to many things in life, uh, not just mathematics, but any kind of language, uh, science. Um, if you have to write a paper, it really helps to have a valid argument. That's one way to impress a teacher, is to have a valid argument. And this is kind of how we find out a valid argument. It's not so much what the elements of the argument are, it's how it's structured. And so if you have a well-structured argument, you can replace your individual statements with whatever you'd like and have a valid argument. Now, an argument is valid when it, its conclusion necessarily follows from a set of uh, premises. Now, for truth table-wise, if we have all T's in that final column, and it works just the same way that finding truth tables for statements work before, except we'll be doing it on an argument, and an argument is just a statement that happens to be a conditional statement. The most uh, dominant operator in an argument is the conditional operator, which means that's going to be the last um, one of the, the last truth table uh, column is done using the uh, conditional statement. Now, um, an, inva an invalid argument, one that's not valid, is called a fallacy, and that just means that the conditions don't, uh, the conclusion doesn't follow from the premises. And all you have to do is just have one F in the final column, and your argument is invalid. You don't need all Fs. We talked about just that as far as giving it a name. That's called um, um, contradiction. So with that, it's one type of invalid argument. But um, a valid, an invalid argument just needs to have one F. And it's a spoil things. It's taking time to catch up, I guess. So we're going to look at the procedure for finding out whether an argument is valid or not. Um, back in, in, in uh, section one, we looked at... Um, how we would translate statements and write them as sim symbols like P and Q. And then that way we could write a symbolic statement that represented that original statement. Okay, there's finally coming up this slide. Just taking a sweet time. So the first thing was use a letter to represent each simple statement in the argument. So most of the ones you'll be looking at will just have two statements. You can have some that have three. I know that the um, that the textbook has some that have three arguments, and that's the one. Oh, I'm sorry, three statements. And that's the one that'll end up with um, eight rows in your truth table. But I don't think Alex has any of those. Is somebody. Uh... Yeah, wants to check, they can let me know, but I'm pretty sure there is a. All right, so let me go back up. It just went down a whole bunch of ones. So in this green thing, and that's the same thing I got there in white. But use a letter to represent each simple statement in the argument. Express the premises and the conclusion, 
conclusion symbolically. That's something new. We'll see that in a second. And then once it's expressed um, symbolically, then uh, we can write it as a symbolic conditional statement looking much like the, um, uh, the statements that we've already seen. Now, uh, once you've got that statement, and basically what it is is in, in step three there, you take each one of the premises and put an and between it, a conjunction between it. So if you got just two um, premises, you got one uh, conjunction that's going to put those two together. If you've got more than one, then you're going to add a conjunction every time you put uh, one together and tack it on. In theory, you could have any number of premises. That's why they have the letter N. Now, you construct a truth table for the conditional statement in step three. So, same thing we've been doing for a few uh, sections now, 3.2, 3.3, was dealing with truth tables. If the final column of the truth table has all truths, all truths, then we have a valid argument. But all you got to do is have just one F in there to throw it out of kilter, and then you got no, you don't have a valid argument. So let's move on there. All right, so this is uh, one of my favorite arguments to use, even though um, I think they've mis um, they got something wrong in here, but it's not the argument that's wrong, it's just the name. But uh, the old Star Trek, they had this guy named Spock, and he was supposed to be very logical. That's what he's known for, that he uh, didn't use emotion to decide things, that he used logic. Well, um, let's just read this, and then I'll explain in case you don't know. But in Star Trek, the, a spaceship enterprise is hit by an ion storm, and power goes on, on the ship. And then I think that's what's wrong with this, that that's supposed to be Captain Kirk, not Cook. Captain Kirk wonders if Mr. Scott is aware of the problem. Mr. Spock replies, if Mr. Scott, and that's the logical guy, if Mr. Scott is still with us, the power should be on momentarily. Moments later, the ship's power comes back on. Now, that first little paragraph there, um, above where it says argument with the colon, that is an argument in the wild, so to speak. It's made up of things that are said, and done within the context of the TV show. But what we're doing, what they're doing here in the second step is they're writing it out um, into an argument, closer to an argument form that you would see in the textbook or in Alex. Now, for, for those people that are not familiar with Star Trek, and I've never really was big into it. I think I remember it's been a long time ago. There was like a marathon of Star Trek and they showed it. And I probably watched her a few days. And uh, I was just more amused than anything. I don't really, didn't really like it. I don't really like science fiction stuff that much. So, but I know kind of what's going on for the most part. Now, Mr. Scott, there's three people in here. You got Captain Kirk, you got Mr. Spock, and Mr. Scott, he's the guy way in the back that's kind of running the engines. You know, think of this like a ship. He's way down there where the, um, you know, the propellers out or whatever they used to, to, to move this thing. And he's making things go. So he controls the power. So here's the, so they can't see each other is the point. So if Mr. Scott is still with us, then the power will come on. The power comes on, therefore Mr. Scott is with us. So this thing that's written right below argue, the argument, the two, um, the three lines, is the argument written in textbook form. 
and they want us to determine whether the argument is valid or invalid. All right, so this is what we call the, the second step where it says uh, the symbolic form. The symbolic form of an argument is, uh, well, first of all, they said write in a, uh, the statements in, um, you know, P and Q and however many we have. We've only got two statements in here. Mr. Scott is still with us and the power will come back on. So the green part is what we call a symbolic argument or symbolic form. And you can see to the right of the green, they've got in words the things that we established in that argument above. So if Mr. Scott is still with us, then the power will come on. So that's green for if, oops, if P then Q. If Mr. Scott is still with us, the power will come back on. The next premise is the power comes on. That's just Q by itself. The line means what follows. Well, that means it's separating the premises from the conclusion. So once that line is drawn, there are no more premises. What follows at the bottom is the conclusion. That little dot, um, three dot thing, uh, it, it just means therefore. It's shorthand for therefore. So if Mr. Scott is still with us, then the power will come back on. The power comes on. Therefore, Mr. Scott is still with us. That just means that what follows after those three dots is the conclusion. It can be a simple statement, but it can also be a compound statement in its own right. Now, once it's in this green form, like I said, the symbolic form, that's going to be important later on. Um, you might be able to, if you've done a lot, a lot with the truth tables, to just go from step one to step three. But step two can be important for something, and I'll show you in a minute what. So here's the symbolic statement. Now, what they've done is they open up the bracket and they put in this thing right here and they put a parentheses around it because we want to control that because that's one of the premises. That's the first premise. Now, just by general definition, what we set up here is each premise or two premises have to be connected by a conjunction statement. Because essentially what you're saying, if P then Q, and Q, therefore P. So this connects these two premises, and then we put the Q, and then we wall it off with another um, bracket to show that everything in between those brackets are our premises. In this case, there is two. And then the arrow is kind of the same thing as the little dot, 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 because that means if this and this, then P. Okay. All right. So let's keep on going. And we're going to do this um, on the board as a um, as an argument, you know, as a truth table. So I'm going to write on the board. Come on. Just the computer should I think it's also slow. Because it took it away on my view, but it's still sharing it over there. I guess what I'm gonna have to do is uh, so let's of the program and see if that helps. Must be because I see myself as frozen over there. Anyway, 
はいはいはいはい。はい、そう。Have a nice class. So those two are premises. That's the first part. Then that whole thing within the context of the conditional statement is the antecedent for this conditional statement. So there's the argument now we're going to do a truth table for, just like we did for any other truth table. All right, see what I got you. All right, so let's go ahead and draw. Truth table. If you haven't figured out yet, if you got two columns, then making the P half twos, T's and half falses, and then the Q true false, true false, that gives you all four different、uh, outcomes there. All right, so the inside here, that's what we'll do first. All right, now,、uh, this one is just a plain old conditional statement. So that's the one where it's true, false, true, true. Because the only iteration that makes the conditional false is when we have the P true and the, and the Q false. That's the one that's a lie. So that's the false one. Now, what we got to do is we got to take. And y'all got a nice little system in Alex that lets you type these out. All right, so now that's going to be the whole left, set,、uh, set, left hand side. That's our antecedent for our conditional. Now,、uh, we're going to put this one and Q and.、Um, It's and, it's the conjunction, so we don't have to worry about order there. So, true and true is true. And remember, the, condition, the conjunction is always false unless you got two trues. And it looks like we got two of those. This one's got two falses, so that's false. This has got one false and true, so that's false. So, there's two of them that happen to be true because. There's two and two, you've got two truths. Now,、uh, unless you're really good at writing things backwards, I would、um, suggest taking and, and bringing the P over here. And then this also has the benefit of allowing you to look at the last two in, in order because when we're doing this, the last, for an argument at least, There are truth tables that are arguments to kind of get you ready for these, which are this whole thing is just this and this using the conditional state. You could just kind of write a big one up there and use it on those, but I'm going to write the whole thing out just so there's no mistaking that this is our last step. So,、uh, remember, the conditional is true three out of four times. The only time it's false is the first one is true and the second one is false. True, true is true. 
Oh, it's true, it's true. Oops, but there's the pesky one right there. There's the one that gives us the trouble. It's still in there. It's in a different place than it was over here, but that doesn't matter. All that tells us that this is not equivalent to that. So, Any questions about that? All right. So, um, as we have seen before, let's go back over to those notes, and I'm going to show you something because this is actually a well-established fallacy. This uh, if P, then Q, Q, therefore P, that green thing. Well, how can we tell? Well, the book gives us a handful of ones that we can kind of take to the bank. There are other ones in this, but uh, these are the most common ones. This one right here is kind of the direct argument. That's the if P, then Q. Then given P, well, you can deduce Q. The law of contraposition is the one that's equivalent to that. So if P, then Q, not Q, therefore P. The law of syllogism, we'll talk about that a little bit more in a later. And then uh, P and Q, and not uh, P means you can assume Q. Now, this one right here, we're looking to keep a good eye on that. All right. It's the one there on the left. It's called the fallacy of the converse. And you notice, remember when we were doing equivalent statements, that the converse was not equal, not equivalent to the, um, to the a conditional statement or the contrapositive, but it was um, equivalent to the um, inverse. So that's why these are both fallacies. Okay. So, if you had recognized that, you can save yourself some work. Now, that doesn't mean that every one of them is going to be uh, one of these standard forms, but uh, it can make your life easier. This is another one. Um, Side, but there's another one called the fallacy of the inclusive war. All right. Um, it's basically um, like this one here, except you can't do it backwards. You can, you gotta, you can only, this is what this does when you've got an, uh, an or statement. If you rule out P by saying not P, then you can conclude Q, but with this one, if you have P or Q and you state P is one of your assumptions, well, that doesn't necessarily lead to, to not Q. All right, um, this one right here, that one right there, that's um, outlined in blue. That, this one that we want to find out is valid or invalid. Now, if we were to do it as a truth table, it's got eight rows on it. And if we have time tonight, I'll even show you one. Like I said, I don't think that Alex put you through any eight row ones, but the book will come because this one's actually from the book. Anyway, that's if P then Q, if Q then R, 
Therefore, if P, then R. And essentially what it is is, since Q links these, that means you can go from P to R. And that's the one up here. It's called the Law of Syllogism. We may even have another name for it somewhere else, but we can say that this one is valid. Um, this one right here is a, another one that's three. If we have enough time and you want to see it, I'll do it. But let's go ahead and try this one. If P then Q, and um, P and Q, therefore P. Let's look at that. Find on the board. same pattern. If I had a way to copy that one over there that we did and put it here, I would, but I have not figured out a way to insert an image on this board. Although I have other things I could do that with, but So, um, just while I'm thinking about it, um, check the dates on the syllabus. I think next week about this time is your um, chapter three test is coming due. And so, what we, uh, we'll have a review day on um, Wednesday. And then Monday, we'll you know, have a review at least part of the day. And I'll have to go over... Um, part of uh, 10, which is like check sections 1, 2, and 3. So just kind of be prepared for that because those are going to go pretty quick because then two weeks from today is the fifth, and that's like the la that's the end of the midterm grading period. In other words, we have to have everything done that's going to be in the, uh, you know, in the midterm rate calculation. And remember, the midterm rate calculation it's not binding, but it's kind of a progress report. So just uh, recognize that. So this is, uh, I'm going to write the argument up here. It was, uh, All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, write this up here as the symbolic statement. So here's a, a premise one. All right, so now that's what I'm creating for this truth table. So the first one is this, and that's that same old stock conditional statement through false, through, through. 
and then this one will be the P and Q. Now this one's only got one true in it, and it's when both of them are true. So that's the only one that's true is the first one. All the rest of them are false. That's the standard conjunction or you might think the truth table. All right. Now I gotta put these together with the and that right there. And that's what I'm gonna use on these two columns. I'm going to use that one and that one, and we'll put those together with and. So, it doesn't have to be that wide, but in order to get everything written in there, yeah, that's what I had to do. Okay, so I'm using the and rule. on these two okay so true and true is true false and false is false false true and false is also false and so it's also true and false so actually right there this is equivalent to the original uh to the uh, conjunction statement Make sure you get it right. True and true is true. False and false is false. True and false is false. True and false is also false. And then this one is the whole thing. Rather than draw it out, that's the whole thing. It's just that since it's an argument, the last thing I'm always doing is this. Now, uh, as I had said is, I think it's good practice to go ahead and write um, the P again over here, just so you got them in the right order. Because remember, this is the, the antecedent. This is the antecedent, and that's the consequent. And we're using the conditional rule on these things. So true and true is true. False and true is true. False and false is true. False and false is also true. So, um, this is a valid it's going to take a while to show up there but so this is a valid argument because it's got all t's we've looked at um example of an argument was invalid that had one f in it and we also showed that it fit the form of the uh, fallacy of the converse. We also saw one that we didn't do the truth table for because we noticed that it um, um, fit the form of that law of syllogism. All right. So any questions? It'll show up. That I wrote on there that it was invalid. It was a valid argument. So let's just see. Uh, I see everybody in here but Madison. All right, so any questions? Y'all getting this all right? Got plenty of time.
Well, I mean, the point is, I mean, uh, as I said, we got about a week. I mean, uh, and then, like I said, yes, then we got to squeeze in that 10.1, 10.2, and 10.3. And since we lost the day um, from that, those storms, then, you know, we're, we're kind of stuck with that. Uh, <laughs> And that's one of the reasons why I took off those due dates because I don't want people getting penalized for, uh, for, for if they not you know finishing by a certain date because as long as you more or less keep up, it should be all right. Oh, I know what I did. I did the circle. I mean, I did the um, square and the text box. I just assumed that it was slow and something. All right. Well, let's go back over and see what else we can get into with the notes. All right. So I want to make sure, as I had said, this one is like a three um, statement because you got P, Q, and R. So that's going to have eight rows. And uh, I'm going to wait on that one if we got enough time. But let's um, look at least, we should have enough time for both of these. These are, like I said, yes, these are the textbook arguments. Uh, the one that we looked at with the spot thing, uh, that's what I like to call a, uh, ar an argument in the wild because those are hard to detect. I, at one time, when I used to teach this class, would try to get students to go and bring something like from you know editorial page and and construct an argument and put it in this form and it was really hard to do it and i even had trouble with it and it just we didn't really have enough time to uh kind of do it i guess you would say to fully do it as part of the class Especially now, they've gotten everything so standardized with these um, tests, with especially this semester with the everything. All right, so let's look at that first one up here. So this would be um, one, and this would be two. All right, so let's just read this one. I need to take a grad class in evidence gathering or civil rights. And that's essentially saying a, a grad class in civil rights. So there's two different classes. I couldn't get into the class on civil rights. I'm taking a class in ev evidence gathering. All right. So, um, I'm just going to refer back to it. All right, so there's the two statements. There's only two statements. 
so what I'm going to do is I want to write this in symbolic form, and I guess I'm going to probably um, see if I can do it crossways the way they did it in that example. I think you might have to do another one. Okay, so this right here is that line that represents the end of the premises. And I could have done a little bit better by uh, moving that um, sentence over some more to the right, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And then So this right here is just the dot, dot, dot thing. That means, therefore, that what follows is the conclusion. So therefore, P. All right, now before I move on and then write, start, uh, wait, make sure I got it right. So the first uh, premise is uh, P or Q. The second one is not Q, and then the conclusion is P. All right. So let me just um, rewrite it here. So we can just look at it by itself. All right, so um, I think we need to uh, create a tree table for this one. These are the valid arguments. Because if you could do this by virtue of just uh, uh, comparing it to one of these known forms, you can save some time. But see anything? All right, well, let's do the truth table for it. And again, this part is the same for two statements. I'm going to draw several of these. I wish I could make them straight, but. So the true table always works. Sometimes you can take that shortcut.
So we're just going to do them uh, one premise at a time. This is the P or Q, so it's going to be true all the way up until the last one. Because or is just got to have one T in it to make the whole thing true. All right, so there's the first two premises. So then we're going to put it together with the and. Oops. Oh, you know what? I, I should have wrote that. Um, symbolic statement. Let me just go ahead and do that. So I said is you can do it in uh and in, in skip that. But that's why because this is what we're building. All right. So we're building that one. Technically, it would be down here, you know, because that's the next step to doing the two table. So now, what we're doing is we're putting together this one and that, uh, this one and that one. And we'll put those two together with the or, I'm sorry, the and. So true and false is false. True and true is true. True and false is false. False and true is also false. The only time the and is true is when you got two trues and there's only one of those in here. All right, so again, I uh, recommend, because um, we got to do this one and the P. So again, just to be um, safe, I'm going to put the P over here again. So that way I'm reading them in the right order, because the last operation we have to do is, on well, an argument at least, is always that. We're doing the whole thing. This right here is that. This right here, our conclusion is that. So false true is true. And that is just a big reminder about what I'm using. All right, look at that. Now, as I had said, if you got all T's, all right, but let me take you back over here again and uh. I want to just try to show you something that we, we missed. Uh, just to show you that there's no harm in doing this, doing the truth table, but let me put this right here. Notice that um, it's the same form. It's just that instead of using the not P, it's using the not Q. But essentially what this is telling us is 
if you have P or Q and you take the a P out of the mix by saying not P, Q is what's left because it's an or. Well, it also works the other way too. So if we got P or Q and then we take that one out because we're saying not Q, then P is what's left. So we can also say And if we had seen this, I can say this, we could have saved ourselves the trouble. Okay. Any questions? Hmm. All right, so um, let's just do one more and uh, start to finish I'm going to write it out over here Okay, I'm gonna, uh, help me see if I'm getting it right. Because I can't copy this one and paste it as an image. Therefore, So, um, if I run the marathon, I will run the marathon. If and only if I can run 30 miles by Christmas. I can run 30 miles by Christmas or I will not run the marathon. Therefore, if I ran the marathon, then I was able to run 30 miles by Christmas. Okay. So, that's the one we're going to do. So uh, what I'm going to do is um, all right, there is uh, Second one. All 
All right. So that's the only two statements in here, right? I will run the marathon. I run 30 miles by Christmas. So that's it. So what I'm going to do is on the side, I'm going to write um, symbolic. So P is, is I'll run the marathon if and only if, and that's the double arrow. And then this is Q. I can run 30 miles by Christmas, so that's Q. Or not P. And then uh, here's the therefore. If I run the marathon, so if P, then Q. So there's the argument. So then we're going to write the symbolic one statement, which will make it easier to do the truth table. Premises, that's the antecedent to the conditional statement. And then this one is a compound. Alright, so let's build the truth table. Finish this up for the night. Like I said, yes. I don't think you have any uh, three statement ones. I tried to like, fit that one in at the end of my uh, two Thursday class, and I, I was rushing it. And it's easy to make mistakes, so there's no sense in uh, speeding through it. And I don't think you're going to need it. And if we do, we still have one more day to review. There's our four limitations of this. All right, so uh, the first one is the if P, I mean P if and only if Q. And remember that's the one that if they are the same then it's true. And this one, well, they're the same. The bottom of the same, and this is just the basic one, and then these two in the middle. All right, now I need to have a not P. So uh, I'm going to write that right here. I got to be careful because that means I got to read over that this one here. So what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to outline the ones I'm looking at. The Q and the not P. And so the not P is just the opposite. Instead of true, true, false, false, it's false, false. All right, and then what I'm putting here is so that's the two that I got out of and I'm using the OR rule. So just get it straight in your head what the OR rule means. It means if there's one T in there, then the whole thing is true. So true and false is true. False and false is a false one. But these other two are true. Because this one's got two trues and this one's got one true. So there's the one that's the problem, the false one. All right, so the last thing, let's see if I can do this to help um, make these easier. See, now I'm going to take this one and this one, and I'm going to put them together, and I'm going to keep this the same color this whole thing. I'm going to put those two together using the hand rule. All right. So what is the hand rule? Remember, it's the one where if you've got just one fault in there, then it's false. But the only time it's going to be true is if you've got two truths. So that one is true, false, false, false. So that's the whole left-hand side now. This is a rather long argument. That, this is not a known argument, I can tell you that. Or it's not one that we know about, at least. And then we're going to do the conclusion. Yeah, over there. And remember, this is the one that's everything. the original ones and this is just the basic one this is true false true true so now the ones we're looking at are these two that's the antecedent that's the whole left hand side and then this is the whole right hand side and we're putting it together with the and I'm sorry, the conditional rule. The conditional rule is going to be true unless we got the pesky first one true, second one is false. So true, true is true. False, false is true. False, true is true. And false, true is true. This R Allen, I wonder what Alright, so that's enough for as far as um, going over any material because that pretty much finishes up the chapter the section of three point four and the chapter on uh, symbolic logic. As I had said, is we'll have a review day on Tuesday. 
I'm sorry. Memphis today, and then 